All right, got another hopefully pretty quick one here. After doing about a day and a half of shipping testing, specifically testing crops and currency rewards, doing the uh, shipping with the Settlers League mechanic, I have come to a lot of results, some of which contradict what other people have been claiming, how things work. Um, what is not going to be in this video is like, the solved way how to min-max your rewards. That's kind of what I'm going to start working on now that I've established the mechanics itself, but this is just basically covering the mechanics of uh, how things work as I understand it and from my testing and all that. Um, I have a Google Doc that I've been keeping track of things. I will provide a link to it if you want to look at it. Uh, these are just all the test shipments I've done on the left. In the middle, I grabbed the uh, base shipping values just for the sake of having them on hand. Uh, not super relevant, at least not yet, for most of these things. And then I added some notes here on the right side. And the TLDR easy quick version is um, things that do not affect your currency returns. These have seemingly zero effect whatsoever on the amount of raw currency that you are going to get back from a shipment. So the shipment value number. When you put in more crops, it will go up. But you're not getting more currency because the number went up. You're getting more currency because you put in more crops. Um, the number itself seems to have no value or no impact on currency coming back. Same with ores and bars that you include with the shipment. So if you sent two otherwise identical shipments but loaded one of them up with a ton of bars, which also, again, has the same effect of boosting the shipment value, um, you're not going to get any more currency. The only thing that uh, seems to disagree with this in a way, which I need to do some testing on still, is Verisium, but it's not like Verisium gives you more currency. Some of the Verisium rewards, such as catalysts and oils, might actually be like siphoning your currency, like it's converting currency into those things and you get less total currency if you don't count like the oils and the catalysts. Not sure on that yet, need to do more testing, just saw it in like a one-off thing and it was very strange. Um, dust, the magical dust, does not matter how much you put in, it is not going to give you more currency returns. And, uh, the dust plus the shipment value things, like, these kind of coincide because the dust essentially just is a multiplier of the shipment value. What I currently do believe that dust and shipment value affects is, depending on whether you're sending to a Karoo report or you're sending to a, I don't know what the non Karoo reports are. But uh, it's either going to affect the runes that you get back or the tattoos. I believe that the number of runes or the number of tattoos that you get back is just based off the total shipping value. And that's what that number is useful for, as well as as that number goes up, you know, the risk levels go up. And since dust is a multiplier to that, dust is basically just for improving those rewards. And then also, finally, um, which port you choose... Um, so like if you pick a close by one or you pick the Calgar one that's really far away uh, does not seem to have any impact either on what you're going to get back for currency assuming that the shipments are otherwise identical now things that do affect currency returns the number of crops you send because the crops will give currency. If you give more, you're going to get more back. It's not like a one-to-one. -one. It's not always going to be if you send twice as many crops, you're going to get twice as many currency pieces back because it has some funky math going on where it tries to not give you tons of small stuff and it's trying to convert them up into higher tiers, which that's going to be a whole headache of a thing to really min-max and solve how it works. But more crops equals more good, to a degree at least. Um, the listed quota rewards, the bonuses. So when a port wants wheat and they say they're giving you plus 100 percent value for wheat up to like twenty five thousand. when you're sending wheat up to that max it's basically getting counted as if it's plus 100 percent bonus it's getting counted as twice as many so like a shipment of ten thousand wheat with no bonus would be the same results as sending a shipment of five thousand wheat that's getting a hundred percent bonus and then finally, the variety of crops, which is a, a really finicky one, lots of testing, but 
Uh, the initial things that we know for sure is at least up to a degree, maybe at really high shipment values, this tapers off and becomes less relevant, but definitely at lower and mid-level shipments. Um, if you send some amount of every crop versus if you added that total together and sent it all as one crop, the variety shipment gives better returns. Now, this isn't accounting for port bonuses, quota bonuses, which if you're doing those bonuses, you're getting a lot better value out of sending sending just one because usually they only want one, maybe two different crops. And there's going to be a whole lot of testing to figure out how to min-max this, but so getting rid of all the bonuses entirely and sending to a port that has no bonuses for crops, if you send 1,000 of each crop, you will get better returns than if you sent 5,000 of any one individual crop. Or if you sent 2,000 of each crop, it'll be a bit better than if you sent 10,000 of any individual. If you send 5,000 of each, it's a little bit better than if you send 25,000 of any one individual. Um, which, if you want just an easy branded way to get pretty good results, you just can spam shipments to a close buy port of equal split of every crop at whatever rate you can sustain doing so seems to be a pretty good strategy but i think there's going to be some other ways to min max it a bit harder beyond that and then things that might affect the currency would be the tiers of the crop like blues anthemums the highest tier crop uh but it's kind of hard to tell from lower baseline amounts of tests if like 5,000 blue xanthemum actually gives better loot than 5,000 wheat, which is the lowest, which we can, I can open some of these up. You can see. Uh, sending 5,000 wheat, I did it triple three times, gave 52, 53, 53 total pieces of currency. Now, the total pieces of currency doesn't tell the whole story because there's also like the quality of the currency where you might be more likely to get rarer currencies. That's way harder to quantify. But setting that aside, um, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, same shipments, but just with Blue Xanthemum, very, very similar total currency counts. So if there is a difference, it's quite subtle. Um, and it's going to be a lot harder to like prove one way or the other, I think. And then the other thing that might affect currency returns is the hidden port level that people have been claiming is when you finish quotas, you're leveling up your port or you're leveling up the port that you sent to or whatever. I don't know that that exists. I don't think it exists. But if it does, then it might do something because it might let you get better and higher reward bonuses. Don't know. Um, so yeah, that about covers the basics. Um, some of these tests I'll go over really quickly to show show my work. First two are just some big shipments, not really important. First one's a dust test where I did identical shipments, but I changed the amount of dust. 10k, 100k, 1 million. Uh, this one I didn't actually put a tally of the total currencies. This was like one of the early ones. And it might be kind of flawed because I sent Verisium, which we think might be messing with some of the currencies in a way. So, um, but that aside... Even from 10k dust to a full 1 million dust, you could see, like, if you just eyeball these, they look very similar. I did a follow-up dust test where I sent a shipment with literally no dust, and then 100 dust, and then 100,000 dust, and again, look very similar. And if you tally up the total currencies, it's, again, they're basically all the exact same number. So with this and a little bit of other things, very confident that dust is not affecting things. Extremely confident in that one. Um, so what else did we have? Shipment value number not affecting things. So I have a test here, which was Blue Xanthemum. I also have a Blue Xanthemum baseline test. So this was my baseline. I sent 5,000 Blue Xanthemum with 5,000 dust. I had to keep sending 5,000 dust because I did it early on, even though I'm pretty sure it does nothing just to keep the test consistent. But so this was the baseline of, you know, I did three identical shipments just to see what the returns looked like. So we got a baseline. 
I then later did another one with 5,000 Blues Anthem. I'm in 5,000 Dust, but added a whole crap load of bars to boost the hell out of the shipping value, which I noted it down here to keep track of. So the baseline's 350,000 shipping value. This boosted one's almost 5 million shipping value. Now in the secondary one, it's this middle uh, column of loot here. I removed all the gear and stuff that the bars added so that I could have just a snapshot, a screenshot of the currency part of the rewards. Tallied that up. The one thing you will notice is this middle row here, compared to any of these, these have five, four, four runes, like, you know, four to five runes. This one has a ton of runes, which goes back to, I'm pretty sure, shipping value is what determines that. So you can see there's a ton. Um... These ones have 55, 54, 53 total pieces of currency. If you subtract the runes out to normalize it, because this is currently counting the runes, it would be 50, 50, 49. And if you look at this one and you count just the currency without the runes, it's 49 pieces of currency. So it's the exact same, even though the total shipping value is way higher. So shipping value, don't care. Don't need it. Um... And then the ores and bars included, again, goes into that as well. And then there was the port chosen, which was this one. I sent three identical shipments, 5,000 wheat, 5,000 dust, to three different ports. I have uh, snippets of what the port was at the time, so you can see the distance, whatever. And you can see that none of these actually wanted wheat, so that there was no bonuses interfering. And from the 140 kilometer to the 900 to the 2300, uh, again, the results are very, very similar. This middle one randomly had like only one column, which had me confused initially, but then counting it up and tallying the total number again, they're, they're very much in the same ballpark that if there's any difference, it's indistinguishable at this point. Although what I will say is, I think I counted the runes on these outside ones. And this middle one was sent to a Karoo one that gives tattoos. And tattoos have like a higher threshold of shipping value before you can start getting them. You just don't get quite as many tattoos as you would get runes and equivalent shipments. So I think that might be why this one has a little bit less. Um, but yeah. We do know the number of crops sent does affect the currency, which is quite obvious when you, you know, think about things. But I can show that as well. So, you know, I have pumpkin. I sent 5,000 pumpkins. I got 56 pieces of currency every single time. I also have one where I sent 25,000 pumpkins. So five times as many. Now you'll see 5,000 pumpkins, 56 pieces of currency. 25,000 pumpkins, this third one, 132. So it's not nearly five times as many pieces of currency. But presumably there's some sort of calculation going on where this is getting more likely to have higher tiers of currency. That stuff's going to be very finicky, very hard to prove, whatever. Um, the quota reward bonuses, we can show that that works, which... um. I think it was the same screenshot as the 25,000 pumpkins. I sent a shipment of 20,000 wheat, and I also sent a shipment of 9,091 wheat. But the 9,000 wheat was at 120% bonus, which multiplies up to basically 20,000. And these two have essentially, again, the exact same amount of uh, total pieces of currency. I think we, yeah, this one I did not include the runes and the tattoos because one of them was a rune port and one was a tattoo port, so just subtracting those and just the actual currency pieces. Again, basically the same. And then finally, the variety of crops testing, which is something that I think a lot of people came to the conclusion of because they found easy shipments. So all of my baseline tests where I did a bunch of shipments of 5,000 of a single crop, I did it for every crop and I did three shipments of each. Um, they basically showed randomly in the range of 55 to about 60 pieces of currency for 5,000 of an individual crop. However, when I sent 1,000 of each, which is, you know, the same total, 5,000 total, 
uh, we got 112 total pieces of currency, which is actually like substantially more, almost twice as many. Now, you can also kind of see where the diminishing returns slash reduction in like more quantity of currency starts to kick in because if you double the shipment of 1,000 of each and send a shipment of 2,000 of each, which was this third one here, it goes up in the total amount of currency, but it only went up from 112 to 124, even though we doubled the amount of currency that we sent, or doubled the amount of crops that we sent. And there's also a uh, shipment in here of just 10k of an individual, which I had Orgord. 10,000 Orgord was 90 pieces, 10,000 variety was 124. So it's it's not as big of a difference as the 5k one, because the 5k again was almost double, whereas this one went from 90 to 124. It's about an increase of a little over 35% or so. But it's still a noticeable difference. And then you can see the same thing from a uh, shipment of 5,000 of each. I did three of these. They gave 150 pieces of currency each versus a individual crop of 25,000, which you can see with pumpkins here, gave 132. So again, the amount from the varied is higher than the amount from the individual, but not by much. And that kind of leaves me with all the mechanics stuff that I've solved. Um, one thing I can show at the end as well, I did another 25,000 pumpkin shipment, but I did it to a port that had bonus value. So plus 135%. So this is 25,000 crop, right? It's 25,000 pumpkins. And then these varied ones are 25,000 crop. Um, these were getting zero bonus. I think normally if you were sending varied crops, you would get at least one of them getting bonus because that's just how it would work. Uh, but in this case, the individual crop did manage to leap back ahead and take the lead from the varied crops thanks to the bonus so 25,000 pumpkins with a 135 bonus beats the varied crops at 25k and i think there's going to be some sort of balancing act where like you send some mixture of a large amount of the bonus crop and then a smaller amount of all the other crops where you kind of get the best of both worlds i think that's where the min maxing is going to be that's what i'm going to be doing next it's going to take a lot of testing again and uh, hopefully I'll have a good update with that. But anyway, yeah, hopefully that clears up a lot of things. I'm very confident that the stuff that I have determined to affect it or not affect it is correct. And um, there were some earlier reports of things that weren't quite accurate. So hopefully that clears things up. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See ya.